I'm Hinton Harrison with Bluebird, and today we're going to talk about our rear engine electric bus and all of the components that make up that electric bus in order to move it down the road. We're going to start with the air compressor. In order to have the air brakes operate properly, you have to have an air compressor to fill the reservoirs so that the brakes will stop the bus. Here we have a twin cylinder air compressor run by a dedicated 380 volt alternating current motor with its inverter. This compressor puts out 14 cubic feet of air a minute and it has its own dedicated filter. Since we don't have a turbocharger and we don't have an engine with its uh, own filter, we have to use a filter here that's easily washed and then replaced. And this compressor will fill your reservoirs faster than it will on the diesels because this motor keeps the compressor running at its optimal, most efficient uh, speed because we don't want to have the compressor running any more than what we want to. It also turns itself on and off as needed, so it's not running constantly. Inside the chassis rails here, we have the electric motor or the propulsion motor. This motor is rated at 315 horsepower and 2,400 foot-pounds of torque. Now that sounds like a lot, but when you have your average 660 uh, foot-pounds of torque uh, diesel engine with an Allison transmission and starting off in first gear, that axle sees roughly the same amount of torque through that combination as it does through this motor. What you will see, if you'll notice down in here, we do not use a transmission. It is direct coupled via a small drive shaft and we do that, one, to save weight because we just didn't need a transmission. And two, it also saves on any type of maintenance. There's not any oil to change, and there's not any internal components on a transmission that has to be maintained. This module back here is what we call our high voltage module. Over on the far left is a junction box. That's where the batteries are all coupled together for when you charge the batteries, the current comes into that junction box and then out to the batteries. And then it also acts as a distribution box to send high voltage to all of the accessories, like the air compressor we just talked about, the thermal management system, or in our power steering pump. In this area right here, there are two DC to DC converters, and it takes the 650 volts of DC power from the propulsion batteries and converts that into 12 volts to charge our 12 volt battery. And it's very similar to having a 400 amp alternator on your engine because each one is rated at 200 amps. That's how we're able to run like a wheelchair lift and not have the bus uh, on, but it has to be keyed on in order to get the power out of the high voltage batteries and it keeps the 12 volt battery constantly charged up. Also in this area are our AC chargers, and there's three of them inside of here. Now this particular bus has both AC charging and DC charging. So going forward on uh, newly received orders, all Bluebird electric buses will have the ability to charge with 19.2 kilowatts of AC power and 60 kilowatts of DC fast charge. Now you can't do them at the same time, but it will go through the same plug, which we're going to see a little bit later. This right here is what we call our thermal management system. And we call it thermal management because it controls the temperature of a variety of items, mostly the batteries because the batteries like to operate right around 70 to 80 degrees. That's when they're the most efficient and they take a charge the best and they discharge the best. So we have two heaters in here that will heat the coolant. If you're in cold New England areas or you're in the Dakota states or Minnesota where it's cold during the school year, we have heaters that will heat the coolant. But if you're in the deep south, South Florida, we also have what's called a chiller, 
and it will chill that coolant and it will circulate it to the motors and the batteries and that will help keep everything cool. There's a variety of control valves that are on here that divert the fluid to where it needs to be, none of which the driver has to control at all. This is all done behind the scenes in order to keep the bus running in its most efficient manner possible. As we come on around the back of the bus, we have what's called our low voltage module. Now the bus still has to have 12 volts to operate because you still have brake lights, headlights, warning lights, and all that is controlled inside of here. There's a series of breakers and circuit breakers and fuses that are inside of here, and, but not really maintainable. This is all uh, done for Cummins, but for 12 volt control. This right here, this is the brains of the bus. This is what we call the VCU. It's a vehicle control unit. And it does the exact same thing that an ECU, an engine control unit, does on a diesel engine. Now we couldn't call it an ECU because, well, this bus doesn't have an engine. So we had to rename it to uh, something more applicable and that's why we call it a vehicle control unit. This box right here, this is no different than any other Bluebird bus. It, it's called our uh, body PDU. So everything feeds into here for the body and then goes right back out just like any other bus has. Working our way on around, we have our power steering system. This is the reservoir. It uses the same fluid, has the same filter, and uses the same type of plumbing that any other rear engine type uh, Bluebird bus has. Tucked up in here is a 380 volt AC motor with a pump that's very similar to all the other Bluebird steering systems. It puts out the same amount of pressure, puts out the same amount of flow, and then once it leaves this pump, it's plumbed the exact same way as any other rear engine type steering system. So it comes out of that pump, these hoses go up the inside of the frame rail, up to the steering gear, and operates no different than any other steering system on a rear engine type bus. Now this, this is all part of the thermal management system. We have a surge tank that uses orange Dexcool coolant. And we have to use that on this bus because this type of coolant does not have any type of reaction when it's circulating through the aluminum batteries. We use a Ford propane radiator that should the chiller not be able to get the coolant down uh, enough and cool it off enough, it will flow through this radiator. And depending on if it really can't, so if we're operating like in Miami, we have four fans here that the fans will operate off of a, a, a thermal uh, input. And then the VCU that we just talked about will control whether none of the fans come on or two of the fans or four of the fans. And we do that, again, just so we're not using any more electricity than we have to because we want to use all of our battery power to push this bus down the road in order to maximize the range that we can get out of the bus. So you work our way on around. We have one 12 volt battery on this bus. So when you have a diesel engine, this chassis will have anywhere from three to four 12 volt batteries on it. And you have to have that for cold cranking amps. It takes a lot of current in order to start a cold diesel. Well, we're not really starting anything. We only have to have a 12 volt battery in order to run the 12 volt accessories that we have that we talked about a little bit earlier. And we have the DC to DC converters that will take the high voltage and keep this battery charged up properly. So we go from a small, regular 12 volt battery to the main event with our bus, which are the 14 high voltage batteries in between the frame rails, in between each of these axles, which are encased in the same type of material that we build our crash barriers for our diesel fuel, our gasoline, and our propane tanks. Now these are divided into two sets of seven. So you have a set of seven in the front, a set of seven in the rear. 
So we tie some of them together in series, then they are all wired together in parallel, and that's where we get our 650 nominal volts in order to operate our system. We also tie them together in two separate batteries to, so that if any one battery has a fault or goes bad for any reason, you can still operate this bus under full power, full acceleration on just seven batteries. It's just that the range is cut in half. It's very similar to if you had a 100 gallon diesel tank and you somehow got a hole up the side right in the middle. Your engine still runs, everything still operates, you just have half the range. Now on outside of these batteries, we have a couple safety features and we have some plates for service. So you can, this is what we call our MSD, it's our master service disconnect. That if you pull those out, that will shut down the, the high voltage from leaving the batteries. And we have two, if you remember, we have two sets of seven. So we have one at the rear of the bus, and then we have one at the front of the bus. And in order to get the power into these batteries, we have to have a receptacle that can handle that type of current. Going forward on newly ordered bus, all Bluebirds will have what's called a CCS1, a Combined Charge System 1 type receptacle. So if you remember, all of our buses will be able to have level two AC charging or DC charging. So if you're going to have just level two AC charging, you will use this top piece and that looks just like any other level two receptacle and you will only use the top piece. If you have DC charging and have opted for that, you will use the entire plug and these bottom two plugs are where the DC current will come in and go directly into the batteries at up to 60 kilowatts an hour. Other than that, the other major components of this bus are no different than any other Bluebird bus. 